General Atomic's Mojave short takeoff and landing drone, armed with a pair of Dillon Aero DAP-6 miniguns, destroyed several static targets in a first-of-its-kind live-fire demonstration earlier this month in April. In this video, we'll take a closer look at this new weapon system and try to predict its future prospects. Spoiler, they could be truly revolutionary. As for why we think so, watch this video to the end. Recall that General Atomics is a well-known manufacturer of unmanned aerial systems. It produces such famous UAVs as the MQ-1 Predator, MQ-1C Great Eagle, and MQ-9 Reaper. And now the company's new offering is its Mojave drone with a small arms unit. The DAP-6 armed Mojave hit multiple ground targets and seven firings in two separate aircraft sorties on April 13th. A total of 10,000 rounds were fired in all seven passes, or an average of about 1,428 rounds per pass. The drone was controlled and fired remotely by the operator. General Atomics conducted a live fire demonstration which it funded with its own money at the Army's Yuma Proving Ground in Arizona. The unit's rate of fire in the DAP-6 capsules 3,000 rounds per minute. The combined rate of fire of the two pods that Mojave carried during the demonstration was 6,000 rounds per minute. The DAP-6 also has a maximum magazine capacity of 3,000 rounds, giving a total firing time of 60 seconds. The capsule can be loaded with less ammunition to reduce its overall weight. An empty DAP-6 weighs 73.5 kilograms or 162 pounds, but when fully loaded it increases to about 158.8 kilograms or 350 pounds. Many publications on the subject refer to the Dillon Aero DAP-6 minigun as an artillery launcher for some reason but its caliber says it's a machine gun. It uses 762 by 51 millimeter NATO caliber ammunition stacked in a ribbon with M13 links. Apparently it was called artillery after watching a test video that showed a Chevy pickup exploding after a minigun round. But the 762 by 51 millimeter ammunition has no explosives and apparently explodes either the fuel in the vehicle or the explosives they put in there to make the video more effective. Equipping the Mojave for this first minigun demonstration required a lot of ingenuity on the part of our engineers and pilot team, as well as great advice from the Dillon team, see Mark Brinkley, Senior Director of Marketing and Strategic Communications for General Atomics. Getting the guns outfitted for the use required hardware and software upgrades, as well as various ground test firings to accurately sight targets while firing the guns from a fixed position on the wings. The target for the firing was a billboard-sized wall, approximately 4 feet high and 8 feet wide in the distance. Regardless of the initial test, we consider it a resounding success, he added. The airplane carried and fired the weapons without incident. There were no vibration or recoil issues. As development continues, we'll see improvements in accuracy and performance. General Atomics, as is how customary in the development of its weapons, envisions the principle of modularity. The Dillon Aero DAP-6 minigun is a good example of this. The unit's located in a suspended container and is not part of the drone structure, such as the 7-barrel GAU 8A cannon on the legendary A-10 Thunderbolt II attack aircraft. Therefore, the Dillon Aero DAP-6 minigun container can be removed if necessary, and a container with another weapon can be placed on the drone. And indeed, containers like the DAP-6 are only a fraction of the weapons the Mojave could potentially carry. Introduced to the public in 2021 and first flown that year, the drone has three fulcrums under each wing. It's also been demonstrated in the past with air-to-surface semi-active laser-guided or active radar-guided AGM-114 Hellfire missiles with a range of up to 11 kilometers or 7 miles and weighing 50 kilograms or 110 pounds. And with the latest AGM-179 Joint Missile Air Ground Laser-Guided Missiles, Weighing 49 kilograms or 108 pounds with a range of 8 kilometers or 5 miles, the Mojave can carry up to 16 AGM-114 or AGM-179 missiles. In these days of high-precision missiles and bombs, equipping a drone with a machine gun or cannon launcher may seem anachronistic. But military experts say that compared to even modern miniaturized precision-guided bombs and missiles designed to reduce the risk of collateral damage, Cannons have advantages in terms of focusing fire on smaller targets or groups of targets. A Mojave armed with a cannon will be able to switch focus from one target area to another from pass to pass more quickly than would be possible with precision munitions. 
All of this can be especially valuable when providing close air support in densely populated urban areas or other situations where friendly forces or innocent bystanders may find themselves dangerously close to enemy positions. The weapon also allows for larger area targets and suppressive fire. In the future, General Atomics is planning a system with rotating cannons which will allow for larger angles of fire on targets without changing the direction of the drone's flight. And now as promised, why we think the Mojave short takeoff and landing drone could be somewhat of a revolutionary weapon. Earlier we mentioned the A-10 Thunderbolt II, affectionately nicknamed the Warthog in the military for good reason. Having made its first flight on May 10, 1972, which is soon to be the 52nd anniversary of this event, this unpretentious, extremely survivable aircraft has never been able to create a full-fledged replacement. This attack aircraft has participated in numerous military conflicts, starting with the 1991 Gulf War when it destroyed more than a thousand Iraqi tanks, 2,000 other pieces of military equipment, and 1,200 barrels of artillery. A few years ago, the U.S. military tried its F-35 Lightning II stealth fighter as an attack aircraft. After all, this aircraft was designed as a multi-role fifth-generation fighter designed to perform a wide range of missions, including close air support, strategic bombing, and aerial combat. The F-35 offers advanced stealth technologies, integrated avionics, and improved sensor capabilities. Military tests conducted between 2018 and 2019 compared the effectiveness of the A-10 and F-35 in three types of missions – air support, airborne advanced air control, and combat search and rescue. It was noted that the F-35A was able to accomplish all three missions. No mention was made of the A-10 data in the report. It was noted in the press that the results of these tests were heavily adjusted, and it was not made clear which aircraft fared better. But we can say with certainty what the actual results of the comparative tests of these two airplanes were. After all, the Pentagon originally wanted to write off the Warthogs before the end of the decade. At least that's what officials officially said in September 2019. But already in April 2020, the plans changed. The fleet of 281 attack aircraft will be reduced by 44 aircraft with the shortest service life. The remaining ones will be fitted with new communications equipment and will remain in service until 2040. The military believes that to fight a weak enemy without modern anti-aircraft systems such as terrorists in the Middle East and Africa, the A-10 is quite suitable. The optimal solution in a more serious conflict would be to assign low-cost but well-armed drones to conduct strikes. Controlling them from a safe distance can be entrusted to the pilot of a command and control aircraft. The ideal vehicle for such a mission is the A-10 Thunderbolt II. For now, the Mojave is suitable as a strike drone. After all, with the appearance of the Dillon Aero DAP-6 minigun, it's practically no different from the Warthog in terms of armament. There are guided missiles, there are small arms, however the A-10 has the famous 7-barrel 30mm GAU 8A cannon, and Mojave has only a 7.62mm caliber. But maybe the concept of attack aircraft use has changed a bit now. 30mm gun is designed to fight with armored vehicles to hit its upper hemisphere where the thickness of armor is minimal. But for half a century when the A-10 was designed, much has changed. Laser-guided missiles have appeared, armored thicknesses of armored vehicles has increased, therefore small arms are not so relevant for destroying tanks and BMPs. But for the destruction of manpower, caliber 7.62mm is quite enough. In addition, unlike one cannon of the A-10 attack aircraft with 1,350 rounds of ammunition, the Mojave has two machine guns with a rate of fire of 3,000 rounds per minute and 3,000 rounds of ammunition each. Also, let's not forget that one flight hour for the F-35A costs $33,000, while the A-10 only costs $17,000. This figure will be even lower for the Mojave drone. Some experts are skeptical of the idea of remotely controlled small arms. They say that firing a 7.62 by 51 mm artillery system at ground targets requires dynamic maneuvering close to the ground and a different level of situational awareness. But if an A-10 and Mojave bundle is going to be created, what's stopping modern systems like machine vision and artificial intelligence from being introduced into that bundle? Mojave's lack of a human will allow it to perform very risky missions that would never have been assigned to an airplane with a pilot at the helm. And later, as artificial intelligence develops, Mojave may become a full-fledged attack aircraft and the A-10 will retire with a clear conscience. 
While the military considers with what to replace the legendary warthog, General Atomics is exploring the idea of using the Mojave as a small logistics platform with underwing compartments capable of carrying up to 450 kilograms or 1,000 pounds of cargo. Other drones in the company's portfolio could potentially carry these pods as well. The U.S. military believes that diverse distributed logistics chains are becoming increasingly important to support future operations in contested environments, especially in the context of a potential future high-level conflict such as in the Pacific against China. In terms of overall performance, the Mojave has demonstrated impressive short takeoff and landing capabilities both on land and at sea. It made its sea debut last year with a series of experimental flight tests that included landing and taking off from the deck of the British Royal Navy aircraft carrier HMS Prince of Wales. Mojave can act as a sensor, shooter, and support while reducing environmental threats and vulnerabilities and protecting human lives, General Atomics President David Alexander said in a statement in a recent press release. In addition to Mojave, the company is now working on a hybrid drone design that combines elements of Mojave and MQ-1C called Gray Eagle Stole. General Atomics has also proposed a takeoff and landing kit for its MQ-9 Reaper family, utilizing its past experience with Mojave. Well, it looks like unmanned aerial systems manufacturing companies will soon become even more important from the military's perspective. What do you think will replace the legendary A-10 Thunderbolt II attack aircraft? Will it still be an airplane or a drone controlled by artificial intelligence? Write about it in the comments below. We'd be grateful for the thumbs up of our work and subscription to our channel. See you soon.